Testing. Testing. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Sabriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies Orientation Ceremony 2023. Welcome to all our new students and our specially invited guests. We are now going to have our safety briefing followed by the national anthem. Welcome to the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. You are Welcome to the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. You are located at the CLR James Auditorium. There are no planned drills today. In the event of an emergency, you will hear an alarm. Once the alarm is heard, please proceed to the nearest exit, either to the right of the stage or to the back of the auditorium. Once outside, please assemble at the open playing field where you will receive further directions from the college's emergency response team. Washrooms are located to the right of the stairs as you exit the auditorium or to the left of this stage. Be reminded that this is a no smoking facility and do enjoy your stay at the college. Please stand for the national anthem of Trinidad and Tobago. standing for the opening prayer and introduction. Dear God, it is with grateful hearts that we come before you this evening, inviting your Holy Spirit to bless this institution and our program today. We thank you for the success of all stakeholders and for your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. May all be seated.
the members of the head table, management and staff, invited guests, and to our esteemed new students, I say a special welcome. It is with great pleasure that I address you today. I am Mrs. Anna Alicia Alion, Manager, Student Services. Today is a very special day because it is the first physical orientation that we've had in over three years. I mean, look around. I mean, imagine about three years ago or so, where were we? We were behind closed doors. We were all geared up in mass, but here we are today. We can look around, you can look at each other. Isn't it great to be here today? Don't you agree? Yes, it is. I want to thank you for choosing CCLCS. We are so happy that you made us your number one choice and that you are here with us this evening. We, the Cipriani family, welcome you with open arms. You would learn this evening about all the support services that are available to each and every registered student. We encourage you to benefit from all that is available to you. Our theme today is Beyond What Exists. We promise as you take this journey with us, you will develop holistically into champions for social justice and a catalyst for positive change. Again, I want to say welcome and thank you for choosing CCLCS. Thank you very much, Mrs. Alyong. My name is Loriella Miraz, and I'll be your master of ceremony this afternoon. Welcome again to everyone. I'd now like to invite to the podium Mr. Sheldon Salino. He's the Deputy Director of Academic Affairs, and he'll be providing the director's welcome. Good afternoon again, everyone, and welcome. Uh, let me say good afternoon to those online as well, joining us online. I believe we have some of our students probably from Tobago um, joining us and those who are unable to be here physically with us. As Ms. Devine says, it is a pleasure to see so many of you all here with us physically. Um, after so long, I think, as Ms. Devine said, it's, we, we welcome this. We, we're looking forward to this, and we have put plenty of plans and thoughts into this activity and event here today. Um, allow me to recognize our feature speaker today, Mr. Gerald Wilson, former commissioner of prisons. I see staff, I see members of faculty, members of the guild, members of the alumni. Um, I also want to extend on behalf of Dr. Andrew Vincent Henry, the director, who is not here with us today, his apologies as he's out of the country on official business on behalf of the college. So as I said, it's a pleasure to have you here to, with us today. Um, I want to say a special welcome to the students, welcome to the Cipriani family. Um, as again, as Ms. Devines mentioned, we are aware that you had a choice. You, but you chose Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies to continue or to start your academic pursuits. And for this, we are most grateful. Um, we would seek to make your experience here a very fulfilling one, and we are here to serve. We want to surpass your whatever expectations you have for an academic institution for your own academic experience. We intend to surpass that, so thank you for choosing the college as your preferred option for academics, for tertiary education. Um, it is important, or an important part of your tertiary education is this event here today, the orientation event. Um, new students, we take this opportunity to set the tone within, within the institution for the new students. Um, it shares with you what you can expect over the next year, over the next two or three years, as a student of Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. Today's team, as Ms. Devine mentioned, is beyond what exists, which has many interpretations. And what I, want, what I am hoping that you could take away from it 
is that no matter what, no matter what individuals ascribe to you, no matter what society ascribe, uh, ascribes to you, you recognize that you could surpass anything, any obstacle that is set in front of you. So take, keeping that tone in, that team in mind, recognize that you have some level of unlimited potential. We all have some level of unlimited potential and can go far beyond what anyone expects of us. And one of the ways to do this is through education. Um, in the Cypriani's context, we do it through lifelong education, or what we call lifelong learning, coupled with competency-based education. So when some of our program deans share with you briefly, you will get an idea of how we integrate lifelong education into the knowledge and the academic programs that we have here at the institution. Um, your entry at the college at this point in time is a, coincides with a very exciting time for the college. We recently approved a three-year strategic plan that is built around a number of areas, a number of broad areas such as ex institutional excellence, teaching, lifelong learning and research, um, a focus on stakeholders and contribution to national development. And what we want to do over the next couple of years, hopefully at some point in time, our students would involve you. So for example, continuous curriculum review. That is something that we can't do without the input from the students. Because we want to change our programs to make sure we are meeting the needs of the industry and the needs of our students. Um, we're looking at program restructuring. Also, an exciting thing that we are doing is the digital transformation of our academic services, the digital transformation of the, of the institution. So one of the things you would be experiencing over the next year, over the next two years, would be the introduction of a new learning management system, a new student information system. Um, you would be the beneficiary of the integration of more technology into the teaching and learning environments, and again, when you have the one-on-one -on -one and the ac academic advising sessions with your deans, you would hear more about that. Um, those of you who signed up via the website, that's a brand new website that we launched recently. We are doing some things with our library services. So we, doing, we have a digital transformation project that we're rolling out now, and you would be some of the first beneficiaries of that project. Again, as part of the strategic plan, um, the quality manager is chairing the session here today, but in June or July, we would have recently undergone institutional an institutional reaccreditation exercise with the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, without preempting the results of that, I think all of the faculty, the staff, all of us who partook in that exercise, we I think we left feeling that we are going to be reaccredited, continue or achieve continued, continuing reaccreditation for the next five to seven years. And why is that important to you as a student? Um, at the end of the day, once this institution is accredited and we are now, you can take your qualifications, your training and knowledge and go anywhere in the world and work because it's transferable. So the accreditation status of the institution is critical to your education at this point in time. Um, turning specifically to my area of responsibility, which is teaching and learning, um, I am supported by academic deans, program deans, who a couple of them are here with me, and you'd hear from them as well. Um, they are also supported by a team of adjunct and full-time and part-time faculty members. And their aim is to share with you contemporary information, knowledge that prepares you for the present and future workforce. So you're not just leaving here with what's in the textbook, what is already written. All of our faculty members, they come with years upon years of industry experience. So whether you're doing project management, human resource management, OSH, security administration and management, labor studies, IR, cooperative studies, emergency management, environmental studies, the individuals that are going to be lecturing to you, they have a wealth of experience in the industry. 
So that is where the competency-based education is infused in our program. They don't just teach you what is in the textbooks. Um, so as I said, these individuals possess a wealth of knowledge. Um, they are committed to making your academic experience here one that is interactive, thought-provoking, and at the end of the day, rewarding for you as an individual. Um, so finally, your success in this journey is dependent on you, the work that you put in. It's also dependent on the work, family, life, and education balance. So the family support, I know some persons have their family here with you now. That family support is going to be important over the next year, two, three years. There are going to be some late nights, um, work to be done, assignments to be done that might take away from some of the home duties so the family members need to understand and recognize and support the students during that phase as well. So we are going to do our part. We're going to provide the information, the knowledge, the training, everything that you need to do to succeed. But at the end of the day, and as the current students would tell you, a lot depends on you putting in the work at the end of the day. So that being said, I want to welcome you to Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. Take as much as you could from us. Reach out to your lecturers, reach out to your deans, utilize all the resources that we have in the library, all the online facilities that we have, utilize them, and take it away. Build your competence, build your, your experience, and go into the workforce. So welcome again to Cipriani College of Labor and Corporate Studies, and we look forward to partnering with you in this journey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salino. And I like what Mr. Salino shared, that beyond what exists is an indication, indication that each of you need to tap into your unlimited potential. So thank you, Mr. Salino, for sharing that. We'd now like to invite to the podium Ms. Paula Innes. She's the Deputy Director of Student Affairs at the college. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Shavon Salino, Deputy Director of Academic Affairs. Mr. Jared Wilson, Ex-Commissioner of Prison, Mrs. Anna Alicia Aliang, Manager of Student Services, Academic Staff, Administrative Staff, Student Guild, Alumni, Students, and Specially Invited Guests. Welcome everyone. I am pleased today to greet and in welcome our new and returning students on behalf of the Student Affairs team and the college. Thank you again for making Cipriani College your premier choice for tertiary education. We truly appreciate it. Um, I see so many new faces today, but I also see some returning students. We always like our returning students because they encourage us and they let us know the value of what we are sharing with you, the students. Thank you again. For the purpose of um, my presentation this afternoon, I'd like to focus on two main areas. The first one is some of our policies and procedures. I promise it will not be long or boring. And the second area is some of the services we provide to you as students. Cipriani College is an inclusive and diverse environment, learning environment. Our purpose here is to make sure you get as much as possible from your experience with us. And some of the important things are our academic calendar, which shares important dates with you and information as it pertains to examinations, leave of absence, withdrawals, and other policies and procedures. Something I would like these students to remember, which is very important, if at any point in time during your journey you decide to leave the program, please do the necessary documentation. Because if you don't, and you leave the program just randomly without informing us, it will affect your gate in the future as well as your financial liability to the college. Some of the services we provide to the students are tutorials, free of charge, the academics and the administration collaborate to make sure you have need, um, support when you need it. Also, you have direct access to staff via personalized emails, and we also provide many professional training programs and workshops. 
and one of our assets here, one of our gems here at the college, we also offer free counseling services. So if at any point in time you are struggling with your studies or something personal, we have free counseling services for you and any member of your family. All right, so I want you all to remember that if you need help, we are here to help you. That is the purpose of Student Affairs, Student Services. We have free counseling services. If you need to improve on your time management or if you have some other personal issue, we are here to help you and it's free of charge. You all heard me? It is free of charge for you and your immediate family members. We also have many developmental workshops where we help you develop your personal skills and we have several different activities which is the student guild partners with us to do to make sure you enjoy your stay here please participate in the activities that are open to you via the student guild and the workshops that we are in student affairs division make available to you as well and something very important that mr Celino didn't mention which i thought he would the academic department has an upcoming conference in September. Please attend the conference. It is free to the students. It's a very good conference. There's a lot of information that you will gain that will help you in your academics. So to conclude, we in Student Affairs and the academics are here to support you, the students, in your journey. Whether you need help with your academics or you need some other type of help, we are here for you. Please remember that. We have many services available to you. We'll be sending you different packages with all the services that we have, and we would like you to avail yourself to them. Thank you again for choosing Cipriani, and welcome. Have a fantastic semester. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Innes. And as she shared with us, this is an inclusive, diverse environment, which means there's a place for each of you. So again, welcome to the college. We'd now like to invite the academic deans. I'd like to invite Ms. Archer, Ms. Melissa Bridgewater, Mr. Nigel Bagwatsaran, and Mr. Barry Parasaram to the stage to share with us about your programs. Good afternoon, everyone. Special good afternoon to those uh, at the head table. My name is Adriana Archer. I am the program dean for the Security Administration and Emergency Management uh, Department. So, like everyone else, I want to say welcome. And uh, a special welcome to those students from the Security Administration and the Emergency Management Department. Now, when I was thinking about what to say to you all this afternoon, a word just popped in my, in my, in my head, and that word is protection. You know? So under emergency management, we will teach you how to protect yourselves and your families, you know, from floods, fires, hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, in other words, from all types of disasters and crises that may occur. It is happening all over the world. We have to thank God for protecting us so far, but eventually we too one day may come under attack. So we will teach you how to protect yourself from even terrorists and the threat of terrorism. If you want to know more, if you have not already done so, just sign up for a certificate or diploma in emergency management. Now, under security administration and management, as security personnel, you will learn how to protect your homes, keep your family safe, and also your workplaces. You will understand the risk and the vulnerabilities associated with security. 
you will understand how to de-escalate conflict situations when they happen. You will learn about collecting evidence from crime scenes inclusive of DNA and fingerprints. The use how to use CCTV cameras, the purpose for not using the same route that you may take every day, the purpose for staggering time at your place of work, or even the places that you hang out out and who you hang out with. We teach you how to protect. We empathize with the security officers who have lost their lives in the line of performing their duties. We can teach you how to protect yourself. Want to know more? If you have not already signed up for one of our programs, kindly do so now. You don't want to miss this opportunity. We offer certificate, diploma, associate, and bachelor degree programs. Don't have, if you don't have any kind of certification, we can start with a 10 Saturdays program. A 10 Saturdays introductory program, and from there you could matriculate to the certificate and then move on from there. So again, I want to say thank you and welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Melissa Bridgewater. I am the Program Dean for Human Resource Management. And what I would like to start off with, of course, all protocols observed to everyone here, but I want to give you all, give yourselves a round of applause. That's the best all you can do. Come better now. You all have made the first step in terms of wanting to pursue tertiary education. Some of you may be looking to enhance yourselves for your workplaces and so forth, but some of you all are doing it as a personal development journey. And in terms of human resource management, I always like to say we're making a difference. So of course, to all the human resource management personnel and practitioners who will be here, whether it be from the certificate, the diploma, the associate, or the bachelor's, you will be having your own journey in terms of defining yourself, redefining and re-evaluating yourself, as well as to how you engage with others. And remember that you will be making a difference. So let's make it a positive one. So I look forward to seeing all of you all in the classes and the classrooms. And once again, welcome and have a wonderful semester. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, all. Now, usually I prepare a script, but when I see so many smiling faces in one room, I get weak. I just want to consume everyone's time and, and talk about Cyprian and talk about the investment in people that the college makes and the college has been making for the past four to five decades. Good afternoon, all, recognizing all members of the head table, members of staff, uh, our marketing team, as well as you, our primary stakeholders, our new students, our returning students. I am Nigel Bagwatsar, and I am the Dean for Project Management Studies at the college. And I would like to welcome you to the commencement of this uh, academic year semester one, which we start on Monday. Thank you for choosing the Cipriani brand to self-actualize. We are the number one brand that people choose to self-actualize. <laughs> Our deputy director spoke about that we recently went through a rigorous accreditation exercise, and I would like to say that we are one of the 13 institutions on the ACTT's website for being a fully accredited institution amongst 402 institutions in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> we are supported by a strong academic team, a very strong and an unwavering uh, student support services team, our student support center, our, um, our admissions team, our library team, our help desk services, our IT services, our marketing services, our student counseling services, to provide you, our primary stakeholders, a rich, engaging, and fulfilling experience. 
to unlock your truest potential, the Cipriani way. Well, I lose all my time already. <laughs> right? That's more than two minutes. I see that Ms. Devine's watching me, and uh, my deputy director, Stores Affairs, Ms. Paula Innes, right? But I want to really welcome you all to Cipriani College. I want you all to uh, know our names on, on a, first names a first name basis so that we can understand where you are at, where you need to be, so that you are able to unlock your potential, contribute meaningfully to your personal development, and add to your career development. We, the Cipriani team, is focusing on developing you one individual at a time. So when you go home back tonight, we are able to empower your family team. We are able to empower your community so you guys can contribute meaningfully and sustainably towards the national agenda. Empowerment for all in a social justice model, the Cipriani way. So welcome. If I may speak about project management. Project management is one of the trending programs. Project <laughs> management is one of the trending programs right at the college. Right, um, as one of the flagship programs, just like our labor cooperative, human resource, emergency management, security and management, OSH. Right, these are some big heavy hitter programs that we have at the college. And projects is what is, every, is around us every day. Project management. Project management is an essential skill just like occupational safety and health, um, emergency management, leadership skills, team building skills. Organizing this event Right, having the, the humble, uh, humble time of Mr. Lewis here, the former uh, commissioner, right, of Trinidad Tobago prisons, you know, to be with us, that uh, organizing and coordinating all these resources, sensitizing you all to this particular event here is indeed a project. Imagine what happened Sunday with the cancellation of 36 flights at uh, Caribbean Airlines is also deemed as a project. The restructuring of WAS is also deemed as a project. Fixing the big sinkhole at Charlotte Street three weeks ago Right, is also deemed as a project. Right, the, the construction of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Tobago uh, uh, Airport is also a project. The extension of Point Fortin Highway for you guys to be here this evening is also a project. So we live and breed projects. We are the only institution in the Caribbean with a full-fledged bachelor's degree in project management. <laughs> so I can no longer you know, encroach on other my, my colleagues' time. So welcome, right? I want to welcome you all. We'll, I look forward to engaging with you all. Meet me in the corridor, tell me about your experience. I am Nigel. I am very eager and anxious to shake your hands and meet and greet you uh, over the next academic year. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Barry Parasram, Program Dean, Occupational Safety, Health, and the Environment. Um, it's very difficult coming after Niger, <laughs> but I'll try my best. Occupational Safety and Health is the largest program at, at the college, and you can see it is led by the smallest dean, right? Um, in the Occupational Safety and Health department, uh, we have from the certificate straight up to the bachelor's degree program, and um, from the certificate straight up to the associate's degree program in environmental management. In January 2022, the ILO labeled occupational safety and health as a fundamental principle and right at work. And that became very, very important, um, seeing that we, are, um, we do have the OSH Act in Trinidad and Tobago, and seeing that employers now have a responsibility to their employees in terms of occupational safety and health. So those persons who are coming into our program will learn the various facets such as safety technology, safety management, occupational health and industrial hygiene. And you will play a very important part in ensuring that organizations are compliant with the act. Secondly, and this is my um, proudest moment really since I've been dean, occupational safety and health, the associates and bachelor's degree program are internationally accredit accredited. Let me say that one more time for those who may not have heard. Our associate's degree and bachelor's degree program in occupational safety, health, and the environment are not only accredited in Trinidad and Tobago, but it is internationally accredited. <laughs> so, so those of you all who are in the associate's degree program and bachelor's degree program in three years or maybe four years' time when you cross the stage, 
you will be graduating with an international certificate. And I encourage those of you who are in the certificate and diploma programs, so as soon as you finish, move on to the associate's degree and bachelor's degree program. And I, I want to welcome you all to the OSH department. Welcome and thank you very much for supporting local because the OSH program, this international accredited program, is the only locally produced program that has international accreditation. So continue to support local, continue to support Cipriani College, and welcome everyone. Thank you. Standing on existing protocols. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. My name is Janice Johnson Lord, standing in for my program dean, Ian Daniel. We are our department, Labor Studies, Industrial Relations. While I applaud my colleagues and their contribution, I am saying to you it is very important for those of you who consider Industrial Relations and Labor Studies as your choice of program. Why? the very definition of industrial relations, a set of phenomena inside and outside of the workplace that is concerned with determining and regulating the employment relationship. Why is that so important? There are things that will happen in and around your employment relationship that will impact you socially, economically, politically, and otherwise. We will teach you here how to deal with your issues at home and in the workplace, particularly now since the employment relationship has changed with work from home and all of the other fallouts of COVID-19. We understand the needs of working people. We say in labor studies, you either own or you don't own. And this is targeted particularly to managers. We found that in management positions, we are focused on enforcing the rules and subordinates until we become a victim of unjust practice. So we say in the Labor Studies Department, we weaponize you. You are not here to gain knowledge but to build capacity, competence, and skills. We look forward to developing your approach to politics, government and politics of the Caribbean, and understanding your role in society in terms of social justice. We look forward to you meeting challenges and beating challenges coming out of the Labor Studies Department whether you be project management, people, whether you're OSH, people, whether you're security administration and management, people. And if we say in people, we are saying natural justice, right to be heard, the right to a fair trial, the right to be placed before your accusers. At the Cipriani Labor College, if you are coming just for knowledge, you're in the wrong place. If you're coming to build capacity to go back and make a difference in society, then congratulate yourself. We say, make a difference. Seek not so much to make a name, but to make a difference. So in our modules, it's tough, and we make no apologies for it. That's why we are still leading the industry. That is why they are recruiting industrial relations officers in management position to make HR solutions because there's an Industrial Relations Act. And sorry, Mel, there's no Human Resource Act. The OSH Act sends you to the industrial court that is governed by the Industrial Relations Act. All of your employment issues, if unresolved, will take you to the industrial court. And that is why it's important for you to know your legal framework as it regards to employment issues. If you're here to make a difference in society, give yourself a round of applause.
if you feel you can take what we have to offer and make a difference in the political landscape, both nationally and regionally, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> we also want to encourage you in your stay, and I don't want to use the word stay, but I prefer to use the word journey, because we are part of your journey. We hope you will graduate and not stay with us beyond your time, because we want you to go back and make a difference. I want you to make a commitment to yourself today to meet your deadlines, or even beat your deadlines, and leave all the C's and D's in the bag, and walk out each semester with only A's and B's. We strive for excellence. We want you to do the same. We want you to make a difference. Cipriani is making a difference. You contribute to policy making by your action and or your inaction. And therefore today is the beginning of your journey towards whichever choice you make, whether action or inaction. But I'm saying to you, at the end of your journey with us, you ought to begin another more capable and competent in terms of making a difference in the lives of others because your education is not only for you. May I repeat, your fruits are not for you. I often say, if you see a fruit tree eating its own fruit, run. You're dealing with a demon. So whatever you produce, ensure that it redounds to the benefit of others. For those of you who have chosen labor studies and industrial relations, you are looking at one of your facilitators. A little soft gives away A's and B's easily after you work hard for it. <laughs> you will be pushed to your maximum potential and you will be encouraged to unlock the potential you have that you did not even know that you possess. And at the end of it, your lives will be all the more for better for it. I want to thank you for choosing Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. As I did, might I tell you, I am a graduate of this institution. And I am telling you, I am proud to stand and say that because when you leave here, from the associate's degree program, you can run straight into your master's, bypass those who did a bachelor's elsewhere, and be successful as I did. I will encourage you to do that. I will push you to do it. The rest of us will be right on your heels. You may get frustrated from time to time, but at the end of the day, know that it will work for your good because we love you. Welcome to Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. Thank you, Program Deans, for everything that you shared. I think we have one project to work on, which is to help Mr. Bagwats run, keep to time, right? <laughs> I'll now like to invite Mr. Don Hamilton, he's the counselor at the college, to share a few words with you. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson, and acknowledgement of persons at the head table. Good evening to everybody. Good evening to everybody. Great. Just a few important pointers. In our region, there is still a degree of taboo about things relating to counseling. I is a big man. I can handle my stories. I don't want anybody telling me know my business. Any, does that sound familiar? Nothing wrong with me. Well, actually, under the Student Affairs Department, we are pleased to offer you counseling support. Counseling support could be preventative, mental health care, or prescriptive. When it's preventative, we are taken in front. 
when it's prescriptive, if there's a specific issue, we want to be addressing those specific issues. And so the offering would frame out in terms of workshops, Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays at lunchtime, Thursday evening, just for half an hour, you will get the information where we provide nuggets of uh, uh, topics so that we can start thinking through and working through. We also provide personal and family counseling if necessary. Because as the family is a system, and as was said by the director, all of us might be impacted by what is happening. So whether it's a marital, whether it is parenting, whether it's a child issue, we can provide that both online or in person. And what are some of the topics, before I wrap up here, what are some of the topics we have provided and we'll continue to discuss? We talk about resilience over the period of the pandemic. We have done a lot of work on grief and grief recovery. We spoke about management of time, management of stress, study skills, coping skills, financial management skills, and the range of topics. And so when you get the invitation, we want to say to you, log on, participate, and be part of this. Because at the college, we would be providing the kind of a support that we need. And here's this. It is strictly confidential. So no one have to know who say what, where, and when. Is that all right? Thank you very much for the opportunity of sharing this important part of the offering of the school. And welcome to Cipriani Labor College. I mean no discourtesy. I have another appointment at 6.30, so I am slipping out of the presentation at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton, and I'd encourage everyone to avail yourselves to these services that are offered. We each know that we go through different things from time to time, and it's okay to admit that we need a little support, and we have provided the support at the college, so feel free to participate. So now we'd like to have a little break in the proceedings. We'd now like to invite the Malik folk performers to provide some entertainment for us. Tchau! 
water, give me some. Salt 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 water, give me some. perform for you Malik for performance we come to perform for you Malik for performance we come to perform for you Malik for performance we come to perform for you Malik for performance, we come to perform for you. I'd now like to invite our feature address speaker for the evening, Mr. Jared Wilson. Mr. Wilson is a seasoned professional with an illustrious career spanning several decades in the field of correctional services. With an unwavering commitment to public service, he has made a significant impact in various roles within the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service. Mr. Wilson's journey in the correctional system began in 1983 when he assumed the position of Prisons Officer 1. His dedication and expertise were quickly recognized, leading to steady advancements in his career. Over the years, he climbed the ranks serving as Prisons Officer 2, Prison Supervisor, and Assistant Superintendent of Prisons, acting to name a few. With each promotion, Mr. Wilson demonstrated exceptional leadership skills and a profound understanding of prison administration. In 2014, he took on the pivotal role of Superintendent of Prisons, where he made notable contributions to enhancing the effectiveness of correctional facilities. Thereafter, he took on the role of Deputy Commissioner of Prisons before ascending to the position of Commissioner of Prisons until his retirement in 2020. In addition to his professional endeavors, Mr. Jared Wilson pursued academic excellence to complement his professional expertise. He earned a master's degree in human resource management from the prestigious Arthur Lockjack Graduate School of Business. Moreover, he holds a bachelor's degree in psychology with minors in human resource management and international relations obtained from the University of the West Indies. In recognition of the importance of ongoing education, Jared Wilson actively sought out numerous training programs and workshops. Notably, he participated in the Terrorism and Security Studies program at the George, George C. Marshall European Center for security studies and attended the strengthening evidence-based decision-making on citizen security carry secure regional workshop 
Mr. Wilson's commitment to continuous improvement extended to certifications in various management and conflict resolution disciplines. These include strategic planning for public sector organizations, coordinated management systems lead auditing, and mediation skills workshop, among others. Over the course of his career, Jared Wilson has been bestowed with several honors, acknowledging his dedication and contributions to the field. Notably, he received a commendation award at the Joint Services Staff College, recognizing his ex exceptional devotion to duty. Outside of his professional endeavors, Jared Wilson has been actively involved in community initiatives and professional organizations. He served as the Public Relations Officer of the Psychology Association of the University of the West Indies and held the esteemed position of Chairman on the Board of Vision on Mission from 2020 to 2022. He also serves as Director and Treasurer on the Board of Vision on Mission Enterprises Limited. As a seasoned professional with a proven track record in strategic planning, personal management, and crisis communication within the corrections and prison services field, he has since joined Vision on Mission as its corporate services manager, where his wealth of experience and unwavering dedication to the realm of public service and corrections, coupled with his commitment to inmate rehabilitation and reintegration, has been invaluable to the continued success of the organization. Join me as we welcome Mr. Jared Wilson to the podium. Good evening. Well, I'm so sorry that Mr. Wilson couldn't make it this evening because after such an illustrious introduction, I don't think that is me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I, I must say that I listened to the, to the deans a while ago and, and I am encouraged to probably sign up. <laughs> Well, Nigel, you did a good job, right? <laughs> All right. Um, good evening to the students. To well wishes if there are any guests, invited guests. And I want to make sure I'm, that I'm very appropriate this evening. So let me recognize Mr. Sheldon Salino, Deputy Director, Academic Affairs. Deputy Director, Student Affairs, Ms. Paula Innes. And of course, I cannot leave out the MC for this afternoon, Ms. Loriella Merez. So good evening once again. When I was asked to deliver the FITI address at this important event, I was impressed by the theme beyond what exists as it reminds all of us gathered here today that settling for the bare minimum is not an option. I've also been informed that this is the first physical orientation since our experience with the dreaded COVID virus in 2020. This gives credence to the theme in a more significant way as we all had to make the necessary adjustments that brought out the creativity and genius in us in ways we never thought possible. As the great philosopher Khalil Kebran said, perplexity is the beginning of knowledge. So you students gathered here today have made a conscious effort to move beyond what exists and reach for what is possible. I can attest that none of us can predict where life will take us. As young children, I'm sure you had no time to even bother about the future, as I did also, because we found so much joy in playing with friends and just enjoying life, not even thinking that we will age eventually. In fact, everybody who crossed the age of 20 years was an old person to us. And please, don't talk about 60. So let's take a stroll down memory lane with the old man who now stands before you and who never envisaged that he would have spent over 36 years of life in prison. My common entrance experience took me through the wide gates of Monktope Junior Secondary School in 1972. 
Oblivious to the vagaries of life, I made my transition from primary to secondary school to meet new friends and utilize all the new sporting equipment at this brand new institution of learning. Nowhere on my academic agenda was their focus and even expectations of attending university because I never thought about moving beyond what existed. My days at junior secondary was memorable and I probably had the best experience of school life just waiting for the next school buzzer or hanging around the cafeteria with friends and planning the next prank. I remember one day my form teacher had this heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the class and I got this rude awakening that my honeymoon in junior secondary school was coming to an end. The reality then hit me like a bolt of lightning that I was heading in the direction of the labor market and was not too sure of what I would meet in such a competitive environment. That discussion made such a difference in my life and it was the first time I had taken life so seriously I wrote the 14 plus examination in 1975 and my, made my way to Trinity College Mocha, where the culture shock was more than a shock, but an electrifying experience. I met students from other junior secondary schools that made up the class of 40. And although we had all and, and, and although we all had to deal with the feeling that students who we met there may not have been too eager to accept us. We were never discriminated against, either by teachers or students. I made it through the two years and graduated with four levels, which was a much better performance than some of the students who began their journey at Trinity from Form 1. So I did not feel like a total failure, but I must confess that the feelings of inadequacy infiltrated my psyche from time to time when I attended that school. When I left Trinity College in 1977, I'm not certain whether I had the motivation to move beyond what existed, but I'm sure I was in a state of flux and probably at a proverbial crossroads. My first stint in the world of work saw me take up the job of trainee reporter with a magazine for a few months, and then I got an opportunity to work as a trainee electrician at Arps Engineering in 1980 and moved to the status of an A-class electrician in less than one year. In 1982, the construction industry in Trinidad and Tobago was showing signs of slowing down, and I made that bold step to join the ranks of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service on December 5, 1983. The move from civilian to paramilitary life was no easy adjustment, and how many of you here today can say with conviction that a career in the prison service is something you dream about, apart from the security of tenure offers, as evidenced by the thousands that joined the very long lines recently. My entry into this new world was interesting, and I learned a lot in a short space of time. I was always fascinated by human behavior, and when the opportunity arose for me to be part of a basic counseling program offered to prison officers, I grabbed it with both hands. And this program certainly whet my appetite for further studies. As a result, I applied and was subsequently accepted at UWE Continuing Studies to pursue a three-year certificate program in guidance and counseling. When I completed this program, I decided to continue on the academic journey. And I was accepted at the Faculty of Social Sciences to read for my degree in psychology with a double minor in international relations and human resource management. I successfully completed this program in 2004 and did not waste time but applied to the Arthur Logja Graduate School of Business to pursue a Master's in Human Resource Management. I remember as if it was yesterday that I commenced this program while on vacation leave for one year, but on my return to duty I was transferred to the remand prison, which was volatile at that time, and although I protested most vehemently, I was posted at that facility and decided to exit the program with just a postgraduate diploma after one year. However, trying to move beyond what existed, I decided to re-enter the program through an inquiry made by my retired commissioner of prisons, 
Mr. John Roger. I made my way back into the program with much success, and I can say with great assurance that had I not completed that master's program, I would not have been able to wear the cap of commissioner of prisons. Again, moving beyond what existed allowed me to head one of the most critical organizations in the criminal justice landscape in Trinidad and Tobago. It would be remiss of me if I don't explain the sacrifices I made in completing the second year of my master's program. It might be difficult for most of you to conceptualize what it took for me to make it through this period, but I hope it also gives you the courage and fortitude to never give up on your dreams. I was a supervisor of the remand prison when I started the second year of the program, which meant that I worked the shift system, 24 hours on duty and 48 hours off duty. My duty began at 1 p.m. on a particular day to 1 p.m. on the following day. My rest period was from 9 p.m. in the night to 6 a.m. the following morning during my shift. Sometimes I left the facility after 10 p.m. ensuring that the night duty officers were present and equipped to carry out their duties before I retired to the supervisor's quarters. At times it took me about two hours to fall asleep and my sleep would be likened to a cat snap as any time the phone rang in the dormitory, I would listen to hear if, it, if I was being summoned to go back down to, to the facility to deal with a fight, stabbing, hanging, some inmate who had fallen ill, or worse, case scenario, a prison break. In other words, my nights were not restful but tough, irritable, and filled with anxiety. The days I had to report for duty but also attend classes, I would make sure the inmates were fed and locked inside their cells before I journeyed to Mount Hope to attend classes for 5 p.m. I guess COVID came a bit too late for me to enjoy the new normal of the virtual classroom. After class, which ended at about 8.30 p.m., I had to trek back to prison while my classmates were fortunate to retire to their homes and nice warm beds. In some cases, the next day when I reported off duty, at about 1.30 p.m., I may also have classes, so it meant there was no rest for me at all. Just to reach home, have a bath, eat something, and get to class. Then the following day, which should be my full day off, I may also have to attend classes. Don't think for one minute that I got away from contributing to group assignments and presentations. Thank God I got the full support from my classmates, and I must say, this gave me the impetus to contribute when it was needed. I remember one day during class, one of my lecturers, Mr. Kurt Wellington, asked me to stand. He told the class that he was amazed how I managed my full attendance at classes. You see, he had some knowledge of the inner workings of the prison service through association with some of the seniors in the prison service, and therefore he understood the circumstances under which I had to cope to complete the program working in such a stressful environment. That particular day, I felt 10 feet tall and said to myself, at least somebody recognized that prison officers had a brain and the sacrifice I was making did not go unnoticed. Through all the stress and difficult moments, I persevered and completed the program feeling proud and satisfied that the effort was worth the pain. In other words, I looked beyond what existed. My efforts took me to the top of the organization in 2017. And let me also state that prior to my departure, I was elected by the United States Embassy to attend a one-month program in Germany at the Marshall Center, which is considered the best school of terrorism and security in the world. It was the first time that a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service attended this institution. And may I state that this opportunity was given to me just months before my retirement. Nothing is impossible once you have the heart, determination, and passion for knowledge. If we ever become complacent and give up too easily, we will never be able to achieve anything. If we don't have a focus and remove the obstacles in our path, then we will never be able to fully enjoy our successes. Your decision to start any of the various programs at this prestige college says that you are now determined to prove that you are also prepared to look beyond what exists. It's so easy to give up at the first sign of pain, but the only way to build muscle is by enduring the pain. 
thereby achieving the sculptured anatomy which you desire to accomplish. It has also been said that the way out of poverty and crime is education. And taking the step says how important it is for you to ensure that neither of these two critters will devour you. Compe competing assignments, asking questions in class, and researching topics so that you have new and fresh perspectives will give you that strong desire to succeed as I did. Make today the first day in the rest of your life and approach your academic existence at Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies in a manner that reminds you that you must keep looking beyond what exists. As I close, I would like to leave another quote from my favorite author, Khalil Kebran, as he states, faith is knowledge within the heart, beyond the reach of proof. I sincerely wish you the best in your search for knowledge, and never forget the power of prayer in your journey at this college, as I implore you to forget half-truths and grasp the whole. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Wilson. He shared so many nuggets of wisdom and so many principles for how we can move beyond what exists. Principles such as resilience, sacrifice, perseverance, courage, fortitude, passion for knowledge, endurance, and prayer. Thank you so much, Mr. Wilson, for your words of wisdom. And now I'll ask Mr. Paula Ernest to give him a token of our appreciation on behalf of the college. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. And now we'd like to hear from one of our students, Ms. Alicia Keel Winchester Keel. Keel Winchester, yeah, you can come to the stage. She's the president of the Students Guild, and she'll come to share with us a bit this afternoon. An important part of the college's student governance process is that we have a, a student's guild that represents your views. And when, Ms. when the president of the guild shares, I, she would share a little bit more on what that looks like. The guild would have participated in training earlier on this year, and so we want to take this opportunity to present them with their certificates of participation. So thank you all for going through that. Um, Ms. Kelly Brown, Kelly Byron, sorry. Kasten Williams. So we'll acknowledge everyone, even though everyone isn't here. And the ones who are here, Miss Innes will do the distribution of certificates. Of course, we want to acknowledge everyone and your important contribution on the Guild. Yeah, Mr. Kasten Williams. Elijah Harrison, <laughs> Sherry Ann Williams, <laughs> Alicia Winchester Keel, <laughs> George Burke, <laughs> Jasani Davis. Jessica Mockett, 
Sasha. It's Sasha. My, I, my apologies. It's Sasha Market. <laughs> Kenton Batiste. Kim Yearwood. And Kelly Byron. Yes. So we'll invite Mr. Winchester Keel to speak on behalf of the Guild. So standing on all existing protocols, so everybody had a nice little paper, so I walk with mine as well. All right, so good evening, fellow students, members of the head table. Um, the CCLCS Students Guild Executive would like to take this opportunity to welcome all our fellow students to this new semester for 2023-2024, which for some of you may be a continuation and for others would be a new path in your academic life. We thank you, just like all everybody else said, thank you for choosing Cipriani College as your college of choice. Um, if I would be permitted just two minutes for a testimony, I am, uh, but this is my final year. I am a labor student and my journey has been an awesome journey. It has been altering, it has been life changing. It has taught me so much, especially with my work and also at home. A lot of the times I take home information and I share with my husband, I share with family, I share with friends, and even, it helps me to remember my work as well, but it also gives people encouragement that there is information out there to be had if you look for it. Um, I have been in contact with most of the HODs there, um, and I can truly say that, yes, it's a lot of work, but do not be afraid. The lecturers are really helpful. I can say this, I, this is my testimony, this is my two piece away from my little speech that I wanted you to share with you today. Miss Lord, don't be afraid of her. <laughs> don't be afraid. Yes, she is hard in terms of pulling out the best of you, but at the end of the day, especially for our, it was, I don't even know what to call it. It was not necessarily like a, a project as such, but it was some, just, a, just learning because the research that you had to do for it, it was information that is not just for that day, for our debates. It was just awesome. And you would be encouraged to do a lot of things, go move outside of your box, especially things like writing um, for the newsletters and stuff like that. And some of your pieces will be chosen to go in the national newspaper. You all can think about that as well. So this is not just a college for you to pay and that's it. It's something that, it's just another journey, another step that you would realize afterwards, hey, I have done it. And as a final year student, and I have been here from since 2017, yeah, I have done it. I feel accomplished. And at the end of the day, you all will say the same thing. I can guarantee that. Right, so my little speech. So I want to begin with a quote from Marianne Radmacher. Um, courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes it's a quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. For a lot of us, we need that quiet voice because with all the external factors in our lives, sometimes we, we, we are tempted to give up. And I am telling you, you don't need to give up. We are here to support you. Your lecturers are here to support you. The Student Guild is here to support you. We want to encourage all of you to be your classmates keeper. We didn't start this journey to fail, and especially didn't pay money to fail. That's the most important thing. Find someone, find persons in your faculty, in your classrooms, everywhere, to help each other, who you're gelling with, to push through your courses. This lady here, 
Ms. Sherry Ann Williams. Um, she has been with me to my journey, personal, academic, and I can say that this is one of the things that you gain at this college, lifelong friendship, that anything, anywhere, pick up a phone, send a text message, they're going to be there for you. And this is, this is one of the things that you get at this college, lifelong friendships as well. You get to build that. Well, cast on too. <laughs> right? Um, above all, we want you to be able to balance this academic. Right? Try for social life, and this is where the guild comes in. We just want to share just a little bit because we don't want to take too long, they will put you off. Right? Share the role of the guild in your college life. The primary role is to be the representative for your interests and the welfare of the student population to encourage camaraderie amongst the students and various activities that we host. So we are supposed to be having our annual general meeting in November of this year. And here we will tell you about all the activities that we have done. So if I could give you a couple. We have had um, both online and in-person activities. We did sip and paint, it was awesome. We had kite flying and picnic. We had our family day in July. And a little later, so in November, we are having our AGM where you will get everything in terms of how your guild fees are spent. You must know that once you are paying guild fees, all activities, every single activity that we host on your behalf for you is free, right? So you come, you enjoy yourself, and you learn to de-stress, for want of a better word. Right? We're also going to be having a little cooler line. And uh, finally, um, we want to have two events. One um, a Christmas um, in Tobago and one in Trinidad. So Tobago students who are online and listening to us, look out for this. We would share details as um, we finalize everything. And we want to make sure that the college experience is one, even international students as well. We want to say thank you for making Cipriani part of your journey in life. And I just want to end by saying even the greatest are big were beginners. Don't be afraid to take that first step. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Alicia. And just to reiterate, courage is a quiet voice that says, try tomorrow. I'd now like to invite Mr. Stephen Matheson to speak on behalf of the student alumni. Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, members of the head table, uh, those that are there and those that are wrong, members of uh, the faculty, many of you that I would have been my lecturer at the college when I was here. I would have begun my journey at Cipriani College of Labor in 2009. I spent about four years here, and I want to say that it was really a, a very exciting journey, but not just exciting, I, I learned a lot of how to be a professional. And therefore today I work in the professional world as a consultant and uh, I am researchable. So, what I would like to say, the, I am a member of the alumni. You only become a member of the alumni when you graduate from Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. The thing is, um, many of you are returning students here, and you would have graduated at the levels 
before the level that you are at right now. Therefore, you are a member of the alumni, some of you. And it is always good. The, the, what I would like to say is that an institution, we, we are looking at a team today doing, what is the team? Be, uh, beyond what exists. Beyond what, is, what exists. And an, an institution like this is as strong as its alumni. All institutions, I'm part of three other alumni, the University of the West Indies and Lockjack. And the strength of the institution is encapsulated in the alumni to, to a large extent. So it is very important, those of you who are sitting here, who are members of the alumni, to find some way to participate to help those that are coming in the, the institution for the first time and also to share your experience so that you can go beyond those that are even those that are coming on can live the life of through the, your experience one of the things i would like to say about sapriani college of labor and corporate studies is that it is different from the other institutions, the other tertiary education institutions that I would have attended. And it is one of the defining institutions, in my view, that would have given me the, what it took to be a, a consultant, to be a, a professional today. I would have studied human resource management at Sapriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. And I would have changed the career about three, three times before. But what I would have learned, as this is for the new people coming in here, what I would have learned at Sapriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies cannot co be compared with anything that I would have learned at any other institutions. As a matter of fact, and I think one of the speakers would have made that point, the lecturers here are lecturers who would have been industry experts and would have would give you industry practical knowledge and, and transfer that to you so that you are able to go out there and and do what you can hit the ground running I should say. Not as a person who just came to a university study, regurgitate, and pass an exam, but someone who can actually go out and do what it takes as a practitioner, practically. So I would have studied human resource management here, and um, notwithstanding that I would have done a master's in human resource management at, at a Lockjack Graduate School of Business, but I, 90% of my work is in the industrial court. So today, I am considered a senior, in, a senior practitioner at the industrial court, and I can say that I work for both trade unions and employers. I work for 32 different companies. Two of them are Fortune 500 companies, international companies, as their consultant. And I haven't, I've never lost a case for a trade union, never. Lost a case, and I've done over 32 cases for almost six trade unions in Trinidad and Tobago. Never lost a case for a trade union, and for employers, I would be able to. I have been able to do things that um, is sometimes beyond imagination because of the knowledge that I would have gained from Supriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. So I want to see that you can do, you can, you can go beyond your, what you, you think that you, you, you would bring into this institution at this present time coming in, and you can also be a trendsetter. You can go out there, I, I, by the way, I was the, the president of the Student Guild for Sapriani for two years, two of my four years here, and that too, would have given me some added experience as uh, a leader. 
So today I can safely say that Supriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies is the place that you should be. You've made a, a very good choice. The Alumni Association is a group of people who would have passed through here, who would have graduated, and we try to bring content to you from time to time. We, we have some, I would say, some very good programs from time to time. I would be part of your training. I, my company sometimes uh, in, provide internship for students at Supriani College of Labor and other institutions. But um, you, when you become a member of the alumni, you should strive to do things that would continue or, or strengthen the institution as a member of the alumni or someone who would have gone before you. So that being said, I want to say that you made a good choice in joining Sapriani College or t making that, taking that step to do a degree program or a certificate program or whatever program you're doing. And I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Matheson. We're now at the end of our program. I'd like to invite Ms. Solange Fletcher to do the vote of thanks. And right after she does that, we have 10 prizes. I know you would have filled out some, um, some the vote, an entry form. So we have the door prize to give out after. So once she's finished, we will do the selection for that. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the CCLCS family, I'd like to take this time to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our sponsors, who undoubtedly made today possible. The Guardian Group, Extra Foods Limited, the Maritime Financial Group, Bermudas, Nestle, Holiday Snacks, SM Jalil, VOE and James Flavors Limited, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Credit Union, and the Unitrust Corporation. To the CCLCS family, our internal stakeholders, today has been a success because of your continuous dedication. The director and management, the student affairs staff, the academic affairs staff and faculty, fiscal staff, the orientation committee, facilities and operations staff, stakeholder relations, business development, information technology staff, the Students Guild, and the alumni of CCLCS. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fletcher. I'd now like to invite Ms. Wendy Sutherland to join me on this stage. And I'd also like to have one volunteer from the audience to come to help me select the prizes. Anyone? Yeah. Here, come here. Are y'all feeling lucky? <laughs> Lizelle Tucson Guppy. While Miss Guppy is walking, we'll go ahead and select the next one. Antoinette Bonaparte. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Omadat Sahadeo. Dennis Bash. <laughs> Bevan Alexander. <laughs> Jamie Raphael. DeAndre Dupwell. Mm -hmm. 
Nikisha Williams Pryor. Karyan Sealy. And this is the final one. Rene Ali Lamassi. Thank you so much. Renee Ali Lamassi. Is she still there? Oh, you got it? Okay, all right. Carrie Ann Seeley. Everyone came? No? Okay. Has she got her last one? Oh, we have another one? We have one more? Okay. All right. Okay. All right, we have one more. Do you want to <laughs> Kelly Ann Bucard. Congratulations to all our winners. And thank you all so much for coming and participating this afternoon. I'd like to encourage everyone, I believe you would have gotten a feedback form, so just to encourage you to fill it out and also to submit it before you leave as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And thank you and welcome to the Sabriani family once more. Good afternoon. If there are any students among us who didn't collect their package, you can do so on your way out. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Be safe. These are clearly communicated to all our stakeholders. The college remains steadfast to its commitment to advancing social justice through research and high quality academic programs. Teaching and learning is at the core of the institution. The college is equipped with state-of-the-art smart classrooms to ensure that students have the best learning experience. The distance learning room is outfitted for the delivery of remote teaching services and also creates a space for intellectual debates and discussions. The library supports the mission of the college by providing relevant resources in various formats. A key highlight is the ILO Library Collection and the Special Collections. The computer lab is fully equipped with desktops and internet access to facilitate teaching and learning at its best. The OSH Lab serves as a critical tool that provides interactive learning to ensure that students are competent in their field of study. The college has implemented mechanisms to support its key stakeholders in their academic journey and campus experience. The Student Support Center caters to the holistic development of the student, providing academic and social support. The counselor's office is located inside the Student Support Center and supports the mental and emotional well-being of students and staff. The college's system of governance provides for students' input in decision-making through the Student Guild. The Student Guild office is located within the Student Activity Center. The Student Activity Center is the hub for all student related activities at the campus. The college's cafeteria is located next to the Student Activity Center and caters to both students
students and staff, convenience and safety of staff and students is the college's priority. Therefore, student shuttles are provided and operates from QREP to the CCLCS Valsing Campus. The staff lounge provides a comfortable space where staff can unwind and enjoy a meal or snack while interacting with colleagues. Located in the staff lounge is the lecturer's lounge. In the event that a staff member falls ill, the private sick bay offers a resting place where they can rest and recover. The health and safety of all stakeholders is of extreme importance to the college. As a result, the college is equipped with fire safety mechanisms such as pulse stations, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, and fire hoses at various strategic locations around the campus. In the event of an emergency, clearly marked exit signs and evacuation maps are located on each floor. Once the building is evacuated, persons are expected to gather at any one of the three master points that is nearest to them. In-house safety is also maintained by up-to-date inspections of our elevators, fire extinguishers, and flash The college also provides facilities that can be enjoyed by not only stakeholders, but the wider public. The playing field and front greens are available for rent and has been the venue for past CC, LCS, sports and family days. The CLR James Auditorium sits up to 416 persons and has been the home of many college events, intellectual debates, comedy plays, and concerts, just to name a few. The Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies remains committed to providing quality education and to exceeding the expectations of stakeholders in an ever-changing climate. Welcome to the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. In this video, we will give you a tour of our Valsane and Tibet.